the result pattern seems more fancy than it is. Result pattern is simply when you have a piece of code that instead of returning a simple object or throwing an exception, returns an object that contains its success or the fail path. So you can say that result pattern is a simple alternative to exception-based error handling. And while this part is quite simple, it unlocks some benefits that we are going to cover. Let's set the scene. You are working in a new project and you are given this interface to work with. When looking at it, the only things that you can infer by looking to the signature is simply that this method will be responsible to update to dos, to do items. And also, you know that there will be a response that will return the data, likely an updated version. And if we take close attention to the method, the only thing that we can figure out more than that is that it should be an asynchronous method. But in essence, the only things that I can figure out is that this method will update a to-do, so I can't infer anything else. But that raises the question, there's anything else here? And we only have two ways to find it out. We either find it through execution or we dig into the source code. And if we look into this implementation, there are some things that I want to pay attention, the exceptions. There's no way from the outside to know that that's a possibility, but worse than that is that we are doing control flow using exceptions. What, as is generally known, can cause a lot of performance problems. So that means that if we go back into our contract, there's something missing there. So that leads me to understand that I have a readability problem. This interface doesn't reveal what can happen in case something goes wrong. So what if we apply here the result pattern. And by the simple fact of introducing a result object, now I have an honest interface, an interface that says what I can expect from it, that will help me in terms of developer experience when I'm consuming that code. I no longer need to take a look into the complete source code to understand what is happening inside. By using the result object, we have code that improves in terms of readability, that is honest and expressive. So we now can refactor this source code in order to return a result object. For that, it's quite simple. We just need to update the return type. And when we return or throw an exception, now we always return something accordingly. That means that I'm leaving exceptions only to the cases where I in fact have an exception, or has a lot of benefits. For example, one of them is in terms of monitoring. If you want to have a metric of exceptions happening inside of your system, you don't want that metric being influenced by expected cases. And by the way, if you want to know more about that, about monitoring, observability, having metrics for exceptions, using open telemetry, I have a new course available at Dome Train that you can find the link in the description and use the promo code for 20% discount if you are one of the first. But that is not the topic for this video. So how can we bring this result type into our code bases? In some languages, you are a lucky developer and you already have the result type there. It's part of the framework. In other places like c .net, you don't have it. So you have mainly two options. You can either bring a library and you can find many of them as open source, or you can do it manually yourself. For full disclosure, I would recommend to use a library, but to explain you what the result pattern is, today we are going to implement it ourselves. A basic version, let's be honest. To implement the result pattern, we need a result class. And it's important to say that the origin of this pattern comes from functional programming, as many other good ideas come from. So if you are familiar with concepts like the maybe, the either, monads, I bet you will feel comfortable with what we'll do here today. So the result class needs mainly three parts. It needs a status, somewhere where we'll hold the information that the result was successful or not. It needs the data. So if we return the result and the result has data in it, like to, to do like we are seeing, we need a place where we'll hold that information and give it back to the caller. And also we need a place to hold errors. That's the base of our structure. And then we need to be able to create it in case of success or in case of error. And what is an error? An error is a simple structure. It can have 
only a message, you can use something like a code and a description. The important thing is that then you can have a full catalog of the errors that can happen. This practice leads to a clear definition of the errors that can happen in our domain. That is something that if you practice domain-driven design, you will love for sure. And that is the way that we make this code possible. But there's something here that I don't like, to be honest. I don't like the fact that to return an error or to return the successful case, I need all of these semantics. While in the past it was quite simple, I just returned my to-do. Now I need to call the result.success in order to return my response. That's friction. But we are lucky that there's a solution for that. And we can go from this to this. How's that possible? We can make that possible by using implicit operators. Those implicit operators can be responsible to create correctly the result class depending on the result type. If we are returning a success case or if we are returning an error. And the beauty of it is that it happens automatically without the developer needing to think about it, needing to write the conversion code. So with this simple tip, now we can go from source code like this to this. Now that we have seen how to make that interface expressive and we review the source code in order to obey to that interface, we need to go back. Now we need to do things slightly different. In the previous approach where we were doing exception-based error handling, the consumer, the caller, would need to put the effort to find out which exceptions he should expect, which ones he should react to. So we can say that handling those errors was optional. But if we bring the result type in place, things can change. If we move to the result pattern approach, code can change to something like this. If we expose the internal properties, now we can check if the result was successful and based on that, we take the decision if we should return an okay, if we should log an error, if we should return a 404. Because now to me as a consumer, it was quite clear that there's a result object there that has those properties. I can take different decisions based on that. But even there, I'm not forcing my consumer to handle all the scenarios. He could simply assume that it is always successful. That's why we can bring other concepts from functional programming to help us out. In our result object, we can bring the method match. The match will force our consumers to handle two scenarios, the success path and the error path. And how do we put that in place? We can bring a simple method to help us out. This method takes two actions, one for the scenario when things went well, and the other one when there's an error. By doing this, we force them to provide two functions for each of those scenarios. But even then, let's be honest that this is not perfect. Even then, they can discard the error case, for example, and ignore it. But that would be a conscious decision. So we can say that with result pattern, you get expressive code, code that is honest. You get performance when compared to throwing exceptions. And also you get explicit error handling. So the control flow is clear in the source code. But result pattern doesn't feel natural. It's not the obvious way to do things in object-oriented programming. Many don't do it. It means that it can be hard to sell to your team and you don't want a code base where in some methods you are using the result pattern, in another ones you are not. And also, as we have seen, you can still cheat and ignore errors. While the result pattern is an excellent way to avoid exception-based error handling, there's still a place for exceptions. So make sure that you watch this video right here, where I show you my simple rule to decide when to throw an exception or to return a result error.